Well, welcome to our talk today. Um, on Saturday, I just put a post on Instagram. If anybody had any questions, whether it was like lead magnet, website, strategy, all that jazz. Um, thanks, Alex. And one of the questions I got, um, I just wanted to actually come on here and just answer live because I thought um, that would be super helpful. And I got a lot of information I want to talk about on this subject um, because it's something that we've been able to figure out how to do really well. Um, and it's something that makes a big impact in our business. So the question was from Crystal and she was wondering how to get more signups um, to her lead magnet um, because she wasn't getting anywhere near um, what she had originally hoped um, she would get. And there's a few reasons from what I can see of why that probably is. I'm not going to open up her website, do any of that jazz, but I want to talk about a few things here. We're going to talk about one, why you need a lead magnet and how to do it right. Um, two, we're going to talk about how to get your lead magnet to convert better. So you're actually converting more people that hit that um, lead magnet opt-in page, actually giving you their name and their email address. Um, and then once we talk about how to convert better, then we're talking about how to actually get more traffic to that page, right? Um, and then at the end of it, I'm going to talk about why that all matters. Okay. So first of all, what is the point of a lead magnet? People are like, what the heck is it? Whether you call it freebie, an opt-in, a lead magnet, whatever you want to call it, it all means the same thing. And essentially the point of it is that you have this free item of value on your website that attracts your ideal client um, in order for them to exchange their email address to get this free thing. This free thing is a digital asset, right? In most cases. Um, and essentially they're gonna be downloading this free checklist, free guide, free whatever it is, which is valuable to them because it's based on something they're interested in accomplishing, right? Um, and you're then gonna get their email address, which means you have the availability to stay in contact with them, stay top of mind, provide them with additional value. When you launch offers, um, they're there on your email list um, in order to be able to launch too. We have a huge following on Instagram. I'm on Instagram a decent amount. I'm by no means an influencer, um, but I'm on there a good amount. Um, we have a, a nice big Facebook group, which you are a part of. Um, and then we have an email list. And hands down, no matter what, no matter what we're launching, no matter what we're doing, our email list converts best because it is direct access to them. I'm not doing something in my Facebook group. I'm not doing something on Instagram, you know, keeping my fingers crossed and hoping that the people I need to see the post are going to see the post. Um, I'm sending it directly into their inbox. Now they may choose not to read it if they're not interested in what it is that we're like selling or what it is we're talking about. Um, but that direct access is way more valuable to you um, than any of your followers, essentially anywhere else. And valuable to you in terms of like a business, in terms of you having the ability to convert. Um, you can have 30, I can have 30,000 followers, almost 35,000 followers on Instagram right now. But I know the people who have recently signed up for my um, website planner are definitely interested in building a website. Whereas I couldn't tell you the percentage of people out of those 30,000 followers on Instagram are currently at a place right now where they actually need to build a website. Um, so the value there in terms of the interest level, right, of the people on your email list is always going to be significantly higher than the people on your social media. There's a caveat to that. Um, and what I'm going to kind of get into next in terms of the point of a lead magnet um, is the fact that all lead magnets are not created equal. As you know, some people will complain for months that nobody signs up to their lead magnet, or some people are like, whoa, I get a ton of you know, signups and, and traffic and conversions on my lead magnet every single day. Um, there's two things to consider here. One, we're going to talk about how to actually increase the conversions on the signup page if you're opt-in. Um, but two, what matters more than anything is the fact, is your lead magnet aligned with your value ladder? So in your business, you should have, or you will likely have, we recommend that you have different offers in different tiers for your business. So as an example, low ticket, which is like a digital asset, low ticket, digital asset, um, mid ticket, which could be a course a membership, something along those lines, 
a higher ticket, which could be a group program, um, a done with you type of day if you're doing intensives. Um, and then you would have your highest ticket, which is your one-to-one -one offerings. Masterminds can technically go in there as well since they're a little bit more um, higher priced, higher access. So the higher you go on the value ladder, you are increasing in access to you as the business owner. The lower you are on the value ladder, the lower the price, which obviously means the easy it is for you to kind of create once and just like sell over and over and over. So your lead magnet needs to be in direct alignment with the rest of your value ladder. I don't care if your lead magnet converts really, really well. If it's not bringing the right people into your business that are going to continue to buy things from you and, you know, give you more money up your value ladder, then the lead magnet is useless because then you're just building an email list with a bunch of people um, who have no interest in buying from you. So side note, if you're here and you're able to, and you are watching live, I would love for you to just say hello um, and let me know you're here. So more than anything is first, what we recommend is looking at your value ladder, looking at what you're offering, um, breaking that down into low, mid, higher, and highest ticket brackets. So you can just kind of like put those in containers to see what you have under each um, actual um, ticket. Um, and then saying, okay, this is what I have to offer. Does this all feel in alignment? Does, it, does this all work together? Are the people I'm bringing in in low ticket, the same people that are gonna wanna buy once they know me, like me, trust me, the same people that are going to want to buy one-to-one -one services or join group programs. Good morning, Anna Maria. Um, are, is that the same? Are, does that all align? Once you feel comfortable that that aligns, then you can say, okay, I know I'm good here. Now let me create the perfect lead magnet that brings the right people in, whether you're bringing them in and the next step is for them to buy a low ticket product, whether you're bringing them in and the next step is for them to buy a course, whether the next step is to go right to one-on-one -on -one with you, you have to make sure that your value ladder is in alignment before you even like worry about the lead magnet. Once you have that whole flow developed um, and you're like comfortable with where you're at with that, then we look at, okay, let's optimize your um, actual sign up page for your opt in, right? So that when we're sending people there, they're a lot more likely to actually sign up for what it is that you're doing. Once we know that the page itself does really well at getting people to sign up, then we look at putting traffic towards it, right? Um, there's no point in sending traffic to an opt in page that is not optimized whatsoever to convert. You're just wasting money and time at that point, right? So, value letter comes first. And you create a lead magnet that's in alignment with that value ladder so you know that everything you're doing is working together and making you more money. Second step is to actually look at that opt-in page itself um, and make sure it's optimized. There's a couple things that you can do here. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see um, business owners doing is that the result of the lead magnet is not clear. Like what are people going to get when they download this? What's that win? What's that result that you're giving them? Um, because if you're not if you're not getting them somewhere and getting them a win and getting them to something, um, chances are um, you're going to lose them. So you just did, you just spent all this time creating this lead magnet. You have your opt-in page, you have your email sequence coming afterwards, you're primed to go. Um, but if you're just throwing a bunch of information at them and not getting them anywhere, uh, the chances of them then wanting to pay you for things is really low, right? Um, so is the result clear? Why giving up their email address, it's something that's relatively sacred, right? Um, so in order to get them to actually want to do that and, and be on your email list and be contacted from you, you need to make it very clear what they're going to get out of downloading this thing, right? So whether it's a checklist, a guide, um, a worksheet, what is it going to get? Them? What's that result? Um, secondly, is it super simple to understand? Um, this is something that became very clear to us. Um, over at Tasha Costa Coaching, we have a secret podcast series, um, which anyone who listens tends to love, um, and it's great. But trying to send traffic to that cold traffic that doesn't know us or know me, it's a lot harder to convert. Whereas we have just a free business strategy guide that has like a checklist at the end of every section, so they know what they you know have to do and, and take care of. That converts a lot higher. The guide is just the written version of the podcast. Um, and we offer people to go and actually get the podcast for free once, once they sign up for the guide. But the guide is easier to understand, right? It's easier for people to wrap their head around, especially with 
all the noise that's happening in the world. If I can say, hey, there's this three-step guide that's going to help you make more money um, in your business starting right now. People are like, oh, that's easy to understand. I can sign up for that and get my head behind that. Um, whereas I'm like, oh, the secret podcast series, they're going to be like, well, do I need it on my phone or do I need to upload it on my on my desktop? Well, why is it secret? Well, why is it is it available on Apple Podcasts? All of a sudden there's confusion there, right? Um, so then more people, a lot less people are going to sign up for it because it's not super clear um, and understandable in terms of like what they're going to get. Um, third thing to look up is, is there a mock-up of what they're actually going to do? Is there like a, an image of the guide? Is there an image of the checklist? Like obviously not showing them exactly what the checklist is, but is it very clear what they're actually going to be able to like download and hold onto, um, the more tangible it feels, the more real it feels, the more likely they're going to be willing to hand over their email address. So those three things is the result clear. What are they going to get when they download? What's the, the, um, the win that they're going to get when they actually download your freebie and, and do the thing. Two, is it really simple to understand? Is it a checklist, a guide? Um, morning, Maria. Maria um, is it clear that you're not going to make them spend the next three months to get that result? Um, can you decrease the time delay in terms of when they're actually going to be able to have that thing? Um, so let's say you want to help them plan their website. Plan your website in five days. Okay, I know in five days, I'll have all the content planned for my website, done. It's a lot easier to understand because I also know how long it's gonna take me to get that result um, that's being promised. Um, and then third, make it tangible, include a mock-up, show what it looks like on the inside, um, whether it's a workbook, a checklist, even if it's something like a, a video that you're giving them access to, a video training, how did it be a little mock-up of a computer with your image, with a play button, um, so they understand exactly what they're getting access to. So those three things will help you right away to increase conversions on the actual um, opt-in page for your lead magnet right then and there. So we start off with the value ladder. We make sure it's aligned. We create the lead magnet that is in alignment with that value ladder. Um, and then we actually look at how do we make sure that we get the most amount of signups um, with the people that are actually landing on that page. And that's the three things I just said, make the result, what they're gonna get super clear. Um, is what they're getting super simple to understand? Um, and then three, make it tangible with a mock-up. So it's really, really easy for them to see what they're gonna get when they hand over their email address. Now, I'm just gonna take a sip of water because I feel like I'm talking 50 miles a minute here. Now I wanna talk about, okay, your opt-in page is optimized. You know that it has a, a great conversion rate. Most, I mean, you can Google this, but uh, most signups um, in terms of the lead magnet, usually around somewhere between 20 to 40%. So out of all the people that land on your opt-in page, somewhere between 20 to 40% is usually a conversion rate that you can expect um, for people that are landing on that page. We tend to see somewhere between like 70 to 80% on a regular basis for our lead magnet. Um, cause I feel like it's something that we do really, really well. We run ads to ours. We run that, that conversion rate is based on cold traffic. Um, so we literally kick butt when it comes to getting signups for email lists is something that we've done well, right from the beginning. But if you're looking at yours and you want to kind of see how well it's doing right now, you can look at the amount of people who have viewed the page in the last month versus the amount of people who have actually signed up for your lead magnet, um, and see what percentage that is. If you're between 20 to 40 you're doing all right. Um, if you're less than 20, then we know we have work to do in terms of like optimizing uh, what that page is doing for you. Okay, so getting more signups, AKA let's increase that traffic. Once it's optimized, we want more people on that page so you can increase the amount of signups that you're actually getting. So one big mistake that most people do is they create the lead magnet talk about it once, right? They go on their social media, they go on their Instagram and say, hey, we have this new great um, lead magnet checklist guide, whatever it is, love for you to sign up for it. They mention it one time and then they never mention it again, ever on social media. They think because they mentioned it that one time, they only got two signups. They're pretty much over it at that point and don't worry about marketing it. Every offer in your business, including your lead magnet, because that's an offer, that is something that you've put time into create for people um, and is an offer in the exchange for you isn't money at the time, but it's leads, 
right? Um, so you need to look at your lead magnet as something that you need to be marketing regularly. New people checking you out on Instagram or even the people that are already on your Instagram, if you did the one post the one time, the percent chance of like the, the chance that they actually saw that post in the first place or the fact that maybe they just didn't need that thing right now. Or maybe you weren't making it super clear what it actually was. Um, so you need to be marketing your lead magnet on repeat. Now, whether that's putting that in your sales calendar um, and talking about it on purpose once a month or once every two months or once every three months, um, or whether that's like actually like doing paid ads, which I'm going to talk about in a second, either way, your lead magnet isn't like a one and done have it on my website. So like, I'm just expecting people will find it when they find it. No, you need to be actively promoting. It's also the easiest offer for people to sign up for. It's free, right? Um, so like you should be marketing the crap out of that um, as often as you possibly can. So advertise it more on social in terms of like organic traffic. Um, when it comes to your website, I want you to be super intentional, not just, I've got one page on my website that talks about my opt-in. That's great. I want you to have a pop-up. I want you to put it in your header. I want you to put it in your footer. I want it to be in the sidebar on your blog. I want you to be using it as content breaks inside your blog posts. Like that's when it gets attention, right? Um, so you need to be extremely intentional on your website at capturing. You worked so hard to send people to your website, whether that's because you're working on SEO, you're sending traffic back from social media, you're in Facebook groups, Facebook groups trying to send traffic back. Regardless, you worked really hard to get those people to your website. Now you need to capitalize on that. You need to make sure that they are absolutely well aware that you have this awesome free thing that they sh should sign up for. Um, and if they do sign up for it, it's because they are qualified leads for your business. Um, and that's super important. Um, number three, I um, wanted to bring this up because it's free Pinterest. Pinterest is a, um, a search engine. It's a planning platform. Um, so Pinterest isn't the type of platform where you'll usually see conversions happen right away. Um, but if you start building um, um, organic traffic from Pinterest by adding pins, um, you will see in like two to three months time that start to snowball in, not to mention, unlike Facebook ads, where the moment you stop doing the Facebook ad, there's all of a sudden like it, you lose all that traffic. Um, Pinterest is something that grows over time. So you like roll the snowball down the hill um, and it just like picks up steam. Pins over time tend to do better and get better. Um, and as opposed to like paid traffic in terms of pit, uh, Facebook, where like once you stop paying, that just goes away, right? So Pinterest is worth investing in in terms of a long-term organic strategy. We spend a lot of money on Facebook ads and we have a, um, a really good organic um, Pinterest strategy and Pinterest still brings us more traffic um, on a monthly basis than our Facebook ads do. Last up, Facebook ads. Um, we are a huge believer in Facebook ads. Um, we don't typically run ads anywhere else. We should. Um, and it's something that we'll get into at some point. Um, but Facebook just does really well for us for the time being. Um, and it's not the only thing we rely on. If Facebook ads were the only thing we did for traffic at all in our business, I would be really scared. <laughs> but because we have a really good organic um, presence overall with our blog and then with Pinterest, um, I'm okay with just being with Facebook ads right now because I know that all of our eggs are not in one basket. So when you're running Facebook ads to your lead magnet, you're going to do conversion ads. Um, and you can run these for $5 a day to be getting leads into your business. Obviously, there's a lot that goes into just like optimizing and making sure um, that the ad is performing well in terms of how many signups are you getting and what is your cost per lead? Are you spending $15 a lead? Um, or are you spending like 78 cents a lead, which is typically in and around what we spent. Um, so for an example, over the last, or I didn't write the actual number down. Let me just see if I still have it here. I closed it, of course. I think it was for the month of March, we had 1300 and something um, lead magnet signups um, come in and we spent about 40 bucks a day. We don't go crazy. Um, if we were ramping up to do any type of big launch, um, then I would increase that. But for the most part, just on Evergreen, we spend about 40 bucks a day and it brings us about 1,300 leads a month um, of people signing up for our lead magnet. So just think of what that could do for your business, even at five bucks a day, 
I have clients who are launching brand new businesses that are going right into doing $5 a day ads for their lead magnets that are converting unbelievably well. Um, and as you know, your business can be successful even with a small list, um, but the bigger that list is, the higher the chance is of conversions. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in one sec. Um, so Facebook ads, conversion ads to your lead magnet um, is a really, really great way to drive that additional traffic um, over to your opt-in page sign up or your opt-in sign up page. Last but not least, collaborations. It's a free thing. Look for other people who are in a related industry whose audience could benefit from your free thing and develop a relationship for that with that person. Say, hey, we each have a thousand followers on Instagram. I see you have this free opt-in for something, again, related to what each of your audiences would like. You want to swap? I'll tell my audience about your lead magnet. You tell your audience about my lead magnet. Um, and all of a sudden, you just created a collaboration there right? And it's an easy thing to do um, when it's a free thing and you're able to reciprocate that back and forth. Um, most business owners with smaller followings would be more than happy to do that. Again, as long as the lead magnet is of value to their audience. Um, so if you can find someone who you feel that way about, there's nothing wrong with approaching them. Um, you're not just saying, hey, go send my, you know, go sell my lead magnet to your audience. You're saying, hey, Let's do each other a favor um, and we can really build a great connection and relationship with this. Um, so collaborations are another really great opportunity to do that. Okay, so why all of this matters? Um, business is a game of numbers and it's a game of connections. Um, the more numbers you have, the better chance you have of creating connections. I don't think oh, uh, an email list is the end all be all um, because you can have 50,000 people on your email list, but if you make zero effort to connect with a single one of them, those 50,000 people, um, it's gonna be really hard for you to convert those into paying buyers. Um, but if you are consistently increasing the number of people you have on your email list and you are intentional about connecting with them, whether that be on social media, whether that be providing value um, to them in the emails that you're sending and not just like selling to them all the time, um, those two things right there um, are a recipe for giving you massive success in your business. So if you have any more um, email list or list building or lead magnet questions, you can go ahead and put them here in the chat. I'm just gonna quickly check to see if anybody posted in the group to see if there are any questions there. I don't see any questions yet. So I'm going to wait because I know there's a bit of a delay, but Maria and Anna, if you have any questions or I can see there's somebody else watching as well. If you have any questions regarding anything I just said, let me know. I'll just wait a minute for it to catch up. I'm planning on having YouTube as my main platform. Um, okay, so Maria, do you mean in terms of your main platform to get leads? So for me to add a link on my YouTube channel to take them to my freebie. So where you would do that, one, in your YouTube banner. Um, you can see there's a lot of entrepreneurs that have this. They'll actually show, um, I wonder if I can show it online. Let me see if I can pull that up quickly. I think we have an old one on there because we don't do too much on YouTube, but let me just see if I can see it. Yes. So it doesn't make it super easy, but it's one way that you can do this. Let me just see if I can share. I just got to pull up Zoom here. Too many windows open. Okay, so okay. Share, beautiful. Okay, so when you're doing your banner on YouTube, um, in the bottom right-hand side, when you're doing your settings, you can actually um, put a little link there to your lead magnet. So when they click here, it would go right to your lead magnet opt-in page. Also, in the actual show notes for your um, for each one of your videos, you 100% have to have it there. I would also suggest you can have a, well, in your, um, what is it called? Here, can I not view channel here? No, just wait. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
I might be missing it completely, but I don't see it here. Because I'm locked in. Okay. In your initial video, the one that like comes up as the very first one to your channel, you can talk about your lead magnet there. Um, you can talk about it in the intro or outro to your actual videos. So like in your little spiel before you actually get into the YouTube video, you can mention that you have this awesome free um, opt-in. Then in your actual show notes. So in the description, you want to be able to Let's see if I have it here. So we have our freebie. Download the free ultimate um, website planner and then the link is there. Um, where they can go and download that. So this was just a quick little behind the scenes for a WordPress website academy. So it's not like a regular YouTube video, um, but everything is here. So you can see all the stuff that we want to have there, including our freebie is like right up at the top. So you can definitely um, use the videos to help drive traffic to your, um, your signups. Okay. As a bookkeeping firm, I think my target audience will be on YouTube searching hundred percent because I know I've absolutely searched how to actually do things, um, especially when it came to QuickBooks and like charts of accounts and like trying to figure all that out. Um, and there's actually a lot of, um, this isn't a detraction for you, but there's a lot of bookkeepers who do have YouTube channels. And I think it's an excellent way of doing things. Um, so there's a lot of them that you could be researching too. So don't see it as like, ah, there's already so many out there. Um, and I'm worried that I might get lost. No, take that as your opportunity to know that clearly um, business owners are doing it. Um, and if you are super intentional about driving that traffic back um, and you do a lot of research in terms of like ranking for the right keywords of what people are actually looking for when they're searching, um, you could do a really good job of bringing leads back to your website that way. You could also do a YouTube video specifically just on your lead magnet and what it is. Um, so if people end up on your YouTube channel and they're looking at all your videos, you could have one that says like free checklist or free guide to you know, whatever that tangible result is. Um, and then have you just do a, even if it's like a three minute um, explanation of what the lead magnet is and what's inside of it and what it's going to get them um, with the sign up link right there. I would be very surprised if you couldn't drive a lot of traffic with that one video as well. Awesome. No worries. I know that Trina Little, um, I think it's on Instagram. She's a, a YouTube. I'll just put the thing in here. I wonder if I can find it. That's her website. I'll see if I can find the her Instagram handle. She does. It's all YouTube that she does. There it is. I'll put it in the chat, Marie. You can check her out too. She's a YouTube strategist. She's got a lot of just good information on her um, IG account and obviously on her YouTube channel. I can find you again. Yes, I have heard of TubeBuddy, absolutely. And I think pretty sure there's a video in Trina's um, YouTube account where she talks about using that for keyword research, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't done anything YouTube wise other than we just like add our videos there. Um, but in terms of the strategy, it's not on one of our, it's on our main platform. Um, Facebook is obviously. But she, I remember her talking about that in one of them. So I know she'll be able to give you more information there. Okay, so I know that there's a bit of a delay. You are so welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, if there are any questions after the video, one, say hello if you get a chance to watch. If there are any questions after the video, you can still comment and post a question and I can come back and just answer it in the chat. Or um, if it's a really great question, there's something I can come and do another live on, which whatever questions there are, if I can answer them live. I'm here, I'm happy to do that. Awesome, Jen. Um, thanks for being here. Go back and watch from the beginning. We're just talking about um, lead magnets, better conversions, sending more traffic, um, and then why it all matters. All right, ladies, I hope you have a lovely day. See if I can pull up. There we go. Okay. Have a lovely day. Thanks for being here. Look forward to chatting.